The raptor virus of greatest medical interest is lysivirus, also known as rabies virus. It causes rabies, one of the oldest recognized infectious diseases, and is almost invariably fatal in humans and other mammals. In humans, it usually enters through broken skin, following the bite of a rabid animal, such as a dog or a bat. Although infection begins in the tissue surrounding the area of the bite, the virus is highly neuroinvasive. It's transferred via the peripheral nervous system to the brain, where the replication of the virus leads to the disease. The final stage of the disease is coma. Death occurs within three to seven days after onset of symptoms. The disease is preventable through vaccination and can be treated successfully by prompt post-exposure serotherapy and vaccination. Let's now see how rabies virus replicates inside the body. Rabies or lysovirus particles are enveloped, bullet-shaped, about 180 nanometers long and 80 nanometers wide. The envelope consists of a lipid bilayer containing approximately 300 to 400 spike-like projections. These are all made of a single species of viral glycoprotein. The individual spikes are trimers of G-protein and they are responsible for virus attachment and penetration. Underneath the envelope is the matrix or M-protein. This tightly folded protein forms a link between the two major structural components of the virus. It interacts with both the lipid bilayer of the envelope and the ribonucleoprotein core. The ribonucleoprotein core consists mainly of the RNA genome and the nucleocapsid protein. The RNA is single-stranded, of negative polarity, and it's tightly encapsidated by N-protein molecules. But there are two more proteins in this complex, found in lesser amounts. The large polymerase protein L and the smaller phosphoprotein P. The L protein is probably responsible for all the enzymatic activities associated with RNA synthesis. The P protein is responsible for binding L to the nucleocapsid and the RNA. The two together will eventually form a complex responsible for all polymerase activity during genome replication. This complex will be referred to as the transcriptase complex, or LP4. It's essential for all negative-stranded RNA viruses to already carry an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase packed in the virion. It's their strategy to ensure that the negative polarity RNA will become infectious. For attachment to take place, the G protein of the virus must bind to the receptors of the host cell. The rabies virus G protein binds most effectively to neurocells, but it can also use the receptors of many other cell types, such as muscle cells. During endocytosis, the virion is carried into the host cell inside an endosome. After fusion takes place, the internal virion components are released into the cytoplasm. Soon after, the M protein dissociates from the nucleocapsid, exposing the ribonucleoprotein core. This is important for viral RNA synthesis to occur. Now the encapsidated RNA can serve as a template for the first step of the replication process, primary transcription. This will be mediated by the transcriptase complex and particularly the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. But first, let's have a look at the RNA and its different sections. The genome is a blueprint which codes for exact information and transcript products. On the rabies genome at the 3' end, we see the leader section, or genomic promoter. Then follow the RNA sections coding for viral proteins N, P, M, G, and L. At the 5' end, we find the trailer. 
In between the borders of the protein regions, we find four intergenic regions that vary both in length and sequence. During primary transcription, these nucleotides are not transcribed. At each of these junctions, we find a gene end sequence for the upstream gene and a gene start sequence for the downstream gene. Altogether, this forms a start and stop transcription mechanism which will regulate the activity of the transcriptase complex. The result is that all the viral messenger RNAs will be transcribed sequentially in the order they appear in the genome. But let's see what happens. Transcription starts at the three prime terminus of the genomic RNA. The first product of transcription is the leader. The leader has no cap or poly A tail. What is more, the leader carries an acapsidation signal, which will later be very important in the replication process. But first, the messenger RNAs must be produced. A capping signal adds a cap to the next messenger RNA. When the polymerase reaches an intergenic region, it receives the signal for the polyadenylation and finally termination of the previous messenger RNA. It doesn't transcribe the intergenic region and it continues with the initiation, capping and methylation of the next in-line messenger RNA. How exactly these signals alter the activities of the transcriptase complexes is not known. But in 70 to 80% of the time, the mechanism is successful at each intergenic region and all five messenger RNAs are produced in one go. They all have a cap and a poly A tail. But sometimes, when the transcriptase complexes reach an intergenic region, they fail to resume transcription of the downstream gene. Presumably, what happens next is that the transcriptase complex dissociates from the template. All these combined start and stop events create a transcriptional gradient as fewer and fewer polymerases reach the end of the genome. Consequently, there will be more N-encoding messenger RNAs made. And the L-encoding messenger RNAs will be the least of all. This is called transcription attenuation. It's a general feature of non-segmented negative strand RNA viruses and an important mechanism regulating individual gene expression and consequently replication. In other words, the abundance of the messenger RNAs that code for the nucleocapsid is not accidental. As soon as the messenger RNAs are available, ribosomes will find them and protein synthesis will begin. As the N-encoding messenger RNAs are much greater in number, a lot more of N-protein will be synthesized. In fact, there will be such an abundance of N-protein that a lot of it will never be used for replication. It will just accumulate in the cytoplasm. Back at the replication site, the transcriptases are still transcribing messenger RNAs. But as soon as enough N-protein is produced, it will bind at the 5' prime end of the product RNA, where the encapsidation signal lies. This results in encapsidation and elongation of the leader. The viral RNA polymerase will ignore the sequences at each junction. It will ignore their start-stop mechanism and it will generate full-length encapsidated RNA that is complementary to the genome. In other words, the encapsidation of the leader regulates the switch from messenger RNA synthesis to antigenome synthesis. Replication has begun. On the three prime end of the antigenome RNA, we have the trailer section, or better, the antigenome promoter. The product of the antigenome promoter is the trailer. The trailer RNA also carries an encapsidation signal at its five prime end, and it's even more successful than the leaders. Provided that there is enough N-protein around, the encapsidation signal at the 5' prime end of the trailer will give the order for the encapsidation and elongation of the trailer. The result is a full-length encapsidated minor strand RNA identical to the original genomic sequence.
This dependency of the RNA polymerase on the encapsidation of the nascent RNA is a fundamental principle in replication of non-segmented, negative-stranded RNA viruses. Once enough encapsidated progeny genomes have accumulated, they can be used as templates for secondary transcription. This new strand can already pick up some newly made L and P proteins and become ready for assembly into a progeny virus. As is the case with most viruses, the individual components of rabies virus are assembled in different parts of the cell. The G protein is being synthesized by ribosomes bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum and it is inserted into the ER's membrane in the typical type 1 orientation. Then the G protein is rapidly transferred through the cell's endoplasmic reticulum Golgi apparatus transport mechanism. The final destination is the plasma membrane. At the plasma membrane of infected cells, G-protein trimers are organized into clusters or microdomains. These are formed independently of other viral components, like for example the M-protein. At the site of budding, M interacts with a nuclear capsid and with the intracytoplasmic tail of the G-trimers. The creation of this complex is an important step in virus assembly. What follows is release of the budding virion. The released virions are ready to infect new cells.